Welcome back to another episode of NA Now. I'm Brandon Hofstra, joined by Northeast Generals head coach Brian Erickson. Brian, thanks for making the uh, quick trip down here to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> thanks for having me. It's nice and uh, cool. <laughs> nice and cool down here. Yeah, right. Let's uh, talk about last season. Uh, you guys finished off the regular season 35-24-1, and one, uh, went in the playoffs, 2-3 final um, against the New Jersey Titans, who ended up winning the whole thing. But kind of just talk about that and uh, how, how great of a season you guys actually had. Yeah, it was. I thought it was a big step forward for our franchise. Um, the the regular season was kind of it was kind of unique for us, where you know younger players, so it takes them a while to to gel. It's a hard league to play in, a very hard league to play in, and it takes a while to acclimate yourself to the competition, day in and day out, sleep schedules, eat schedules, workout schedules. You know, take care of your body. So right. we we took some time to get there, and then you know we put ourselves in kind of a situation in the last five games where we had to kind of win out in order to make the playoffs. So. Right. I was really proud of the guys that we were able to put ourselves in that position. Um, you know, and then we get to New Jersey and we take them to game five and, you know, we lose with point zero 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 one second left on the clock. Right. And, you know, those are things that young teams uh, do. And, uh, you know, I got to do a better job preparing the guys for, for situations like that. But overall, I mean, to take the Robertson Cup champ to, you know, point zero one seconds, uh, in round one is is something that we can build on, right. right? And we have a lot of returners coming back, so you know, super proud of the the job the guys did on the ice. Uh, but once again, with my staff uh, getting these kids committed is our number one goal, and I thought we did an unbelievable job, uh, and the kids did an unbelievable job performing and, and getting in front of schools and then getting their Division one commitments. Right, definitely. And we want to tip your caps to, to you guys as well. That the, how you guys ended the regular season was crazy. We were all watching that, getting ready to put out the graphics on who's moving on, and we're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So. <laughs> Congratulations for you guys. Obviously, that was, and like you said, a huge building block to to, yeah. to leave the season on. And we come in now to the to the off season. You guys had the draft. You have this building block. You have a good amount of returning players. Who are some key guys that you're happy that are coming back? Um, and then obviously, or that you're going to build around. But then obviously, talk about the draft and what your focus was. Yeah. So the for us, you know, we're in a lucky situation. Like I said, we didn't have a ton of old ones. We had obviously some very talented old ones that are going on to play Division One hockey or Division Three hockey. Mm -hmm. Um, but we returned David Anderchuk, who was our captain last year, at 60 yep. points in the league, and you know obviously we expect him to take even another step forward if that's possible. Uh, Jackson McCarthy committed to Mercyhurst, one another captain, yep. O2 defenseman, big, strong, physical kid that you know we expect to take a big step forward. And then um, Joe Schubert, another captain, O2, uh, committed to Air Force. So we have three kind of building blocks, you know, three committed guys, three guys that know what they're doing uh, as far as daily preparation uh, to kind of lead that room. So it's kind of nice. From a coaching standpoint, to get through the draft, get through the tender season, know who your captains are way ahead of time, know who's going to the USHL, who isn't going to the USHL, right. um, and kind of have that at camp. So our our training camp, or sorry, our main camp starts August fifth, okay. which will be after this interview airs, but uh, <laughs> before this interview happened. So uh, for us to have those three guys set the tone for us at main camp is is a huge advantage over I think some other teams. Um, and then we have Jared Scott, an O2 that's coming back, Doug Freiberg, another O2, Jacob Kaminsky, another O2. And then our draft, you know, Matt Dibble, who's my, my GM, who I hired, uh, this is his second full season. Um, he's so prepared. I mean, we, we've already started on next year's draft, you know, and we got Thomas Klochkov and uh, committed to UConn. He's coming in. He's going to be really good. Isaac Rentmeester, really good, big, physical, strong player. Um, Connor Pelk, you know, he's in the USHL, but once again, sometimes you draft for... Um, if they're not happy or if they're not playing the role that the college that they're committed to wants them to right. play, you know, so, so we've done a really good job of kind of covering those bases. Um, but, you know, probably our biggest asset is Colin DeYoung in that, you know, Colin DeYoung was, uh, uh, probably top 10 goalie in the league last year. He's coming back. He'll be the starter. Uh, and then we return six defensemen. So returning six out of eight and you have your goalie, you feel a little bit confident going in. We still have a long way to go, but, uh, we're excited about main camp, excited to see what the product that we put on the ice yeah. is. And then obviously in that building, you guys have a built-in funnel, the PHL, 3HL team as well. And I'm guessing there's obviously uh, some players from the NA 3HL that make their way up into your roster here and there. Yeah, I don't know if there's a team in, in, in the league, and, and I don't mean this to, to toot our horn, but I will, um, that believes in the ladder development more than us. Right. Um, we've got, we'll have three kids from our U16 team, our first year U16 team that are on the NA team that went from 16s to 18s, yep. all played some games in the NA3 to get their feet wet. Yep. We'll play in the NA. We'll have probably four kids on our roster this year that have played in the NA3. Not all for the generals, because for us, we're looking for the best players. And, and, and you know, usually they're in-house, but occasionally they're not. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have uh, another kid coming up from our that played U16s, that played U18s. So for us, the, the idea of uh, 
the excitement and the um, the amount of exposure that gets to the advancements of these players right. is is something that's it's pretty awesome. And and for us, we're we're really excited to make sure we keep kids in the building. Um, we've also got three kids that made um, NA rosters that aren't the generals um, that played on our NA three team last year. Um, so they're they're spread out throughout the league and. And that's awesome, you know. Yeah. For for us, uh, that's why we do it. So for us, having everything in the building—a 16 and 18 and NA3 and an NA—all the coaches kind of coach every team and help out. Um, kids get a clear message. Uh, we don't treat them like JV teams or varsity teams. They're just all Northeast Generals. They all go to each other's games. It's it's really an exciting opportunity for these guys. They skate together a lot. They get to know each other. They root for each other, and we think that helps them assimilate as they move up the ladder. Yeah. Hashtag Gen Fam. Gen family and, and you know it's kind of hokey and when uh, my social media girl did put it together I was like eh you know and then it I can't get rid of these kids once they leave right, right. so you know like for me we had uh, I had 96s that I coached in the NA uh, on the ice with me all summer practicing I had 04s I mean we literally can't get rid of the kids and, and that's wonderful sometimes yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know sometimes it's oh I've seen you enough but um, <laughs> for the most part like we're very excited about how happy kids are that play for the Northeast Generals. You know, yep. um, we've become a big fan of the uh, kids that have had failures or have had uh, not success at other programs. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of like that second chance kid, the kid that's already kind of had some humble pie or failure in the league. Right. I mean, if you look at our captain last year, Matt Boxer, uh, cut by a team in this league, cut by a team in another league, kind of on the street. Came in, I didn't, wasn't interested in him, um, didn't think he was very good. Uh, then he just kept showing up for like two weeks, and I'm like, why is this kid still here? Uh, I finally got him into a game, he was my captain last year, just committed Division One to Robert Morris uh, last week. You know, so for me, those are the stories that we love, and right. I think that's what, when people talk about the League of Opportunity, and you know, we're using these kind of buzzwords, but when we talk about it, it's real, it you is. know, and you know, I Louis Boudin, who played in the NA3, and he's, you know, captain at Lake Superior State, and he'll play in the NHL or the AHL, you yeah. know, Kohei Sato, NA3 guy, just finished his fifth year at Bentley after four years at UNH. You know, for me, these are the stories that, that the reason why we got into junior hockey, mm -hmm. and, and these are the stories that we want to continue producing. 100%. Let's talk about the uh, expectation for next year as a season with the showcases right around the corner. <sighs> yeah, so, you know, obviously everybody's excited about their team in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's got the best roster on paper. Um, I think that the one advantage we have coming into the season is that we have some veterans. Right. Um, so our expectation is pretty high. You know, we finished fourth, um, you know, four times in the last six years and, and lost in that first round. And, and it's really time for, for me as a coach to step up and, and get the guys over the hump. It's, right. it's, a, it's for Matt Dibble, for Eric Progen, for Cody Gagno, my, my staff, uh, to really get these guys uh, out of the gates a little bit quicker. Um, Try to get them so that we're not chasing, that we're that we're getting chased. You know, right. we don't care if we win the division. We just want to see where we're at at the end of the year. We want to get to that Robertson Cup, and I, I think that you know New Jersey showing that the East is a true uh, powerhouse. You know, it's been a division mm -hmm. that's been a little unknown because it's you know, like I said before, and many times in this interview, you know, we kind of were on an island for for years. We're the only team in New England. Johnstown kind of paved the way to come out here, and then we we kind of were on our own, and now we've got surrounded some some local teams and. Yeah. Uh, the East, I think, got overlooked, um, and, and New Jersey, luckily, you know, a team that we fought tooth and nail. I think we won the season series with them, or we tied the season series with them. You know, they won the Robertson Cup, and that proves to us that we're ready. Our turn's next, and uh, we're excited about this year and, and hopefully winning it all. We're excited as well. Thanks, Brian, for joining me. All right, thank you.